So the D in DBT, dialectical. So certainly that is a major component of DBT, the dialectical philosophy. The dialectical philosophy emphasizes the interconnectedness of opposites and the importance of finding a balance between opposite concepts or perspectives. Ready, right? Black, white, all, nothing. How many of our clients come in and they're stuck in that pattern? And really, we're talking about bringing these two things together or finding even the middle ground, right? Both, both we can hold both of these things to be true at the same time. Dialectics are applied to therapeutic interventions, emphasizing the integration of those acceptance and change-oriented strategies. By taking a dialectical approach, DBT recognizes that there is inherent tension between acceptance and change as well. So using a dialectical approach, we can bring these two seemingly opposing ideas together. So I'll give you an example. I sat in a session with somebody who had lost somebody very important to them in their life. So there was a lot of grief and a heavy amount of sadness. There was a moment during this where there was a sense of relief due to a shift that was going to occur within their um, social circle because of this loss that um, there was going to be this uh, less contention, less conflict. And so this was like, this was much smaller than, than the grief. But um, afterwards, when the person had passed and I uh, was working with this client, there was an intense amount of guilt for having this thought and uh, feeling this way. And so they were feeling as though it was really actually taking away from their grief. Like, maybe I don't really miss this person that much, or maybe this says something about who I was or what this person meant to me in life. And the client and I, when having a conversation about it, we talked about this idea of both things can be true. We can be completely sad and devastated and be grieving somebody. And we can also feel the sense of relief. And that's okay that there's less conflict in our lives now. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. This doesn't define you as a person. We can have we can hold both of those th things true at the same time. And that can be really powerful for clients when they get stuck in that all or nothing. So we hold both acceptance, which is validating experiences and emotions, and change, which is developing skills and modifying behaviors. So what that looks like is acceptance and change, not acceptance or change. I think that's really important to highlight. So change can only happen in the context of acceptance. Change can only happen within the context of acceptance. So easy, little bit silly example for you, but you're on the side of the road, right? And you're, uh, you've got a flat tire and you get out and you've got a flat tire. So you can't change the flat tire until you've accepted that you have the flat tire right? So you, that is just an easy way to highlight this idea of we have to first accept that in order to make those changes. And so the same is true with where our clients are at in life. There needs to be this level of acceptance for where they're currently at. And then clients are able to move towards making those changes. So validation uh, is really the validation and change, I should say, is really one of the most fundamental dialectics within DBT. And validation by nature is acceptance-based. So this means really meeting clients where they're at without the expectation that their reality needs to be different. Validation and acceptance are really powerful, right? When we validate our clients and our clients feel that and it's genuine and it's authentic, right? That can be very, very, very impactful for clients. But they're only one side of the equation because we need to make movement towards that change as well. And so it's Rogers that said, the curious paradox is that when I accept myself just as I am, then I change. I love that quote. The curious paradox is that when I accept myself just as I am, then I change. And so when a client feels validated, right, and accepted, then that client can make movement towards change. And so this is why I include that infinity symbol here, because that's how I kind of conceptualize it. So you, you give clients that validation, that acceptance, right? And then clients can, can take, clients can take, Lord almighty, clients can make movement towards change. 
And then when clients start to struggle, then clients can move back towards that validation because we, so we can see how they really actually do flow together. And ideally, what I really try and strive to and working when we're working within the context of DBT is helping clients to get to that place where they're able to self-validate. And we'll talk about that in a couple of slides too. Um, but there's a lot of reasons why our clients, when they initially come in, might really struggle to self-validate. So acceptance and change, not acceptance or change. I think that this is a really great way to conceptualize what this idea of acceptance and change looks like. So we're bringing these two opposing things together and then we are able to move forward. And it really creates balanced thinking for clients, which is really valuable for clients and it helps clients to make that personal growth. So your change-oriented skills in DBT are your emotion regulation skills and your interpersonal effectiveness skills. And your acceptance skills are your mindfulness skills and your distress tolerance skills. I will say that is dialectics in a nutshell, like a teeny tiny nutshell. Um, we could probably do a three-hour training just on dialectics alone. But I think it's really important to at least have that idea of you know acceptance and change, what that looks like and what that means to dialectical behavior therapy really so that we can help to kind of start to build that foundation for you about what DBT is and where that development came from. So validation. Validation is a core component of DBT and it emphasizes the importance of acknowledging and validating clients' experiences, clients' emotions, and clients' behaviors. Validation techniques really help clients to feel understood, accepted, supported, and they create a foundation for the therapeutic process. So through validation, we as clinicians demonstrate empathy, compassion, and respect for clients' experiences. Right? We are able to foster a therapeutic alliance, and we are able to enhance clients' motivation to engaging in treatment and change. And it's so important to remember that validation doesn't mean approval. We can validate somebody and not approve of the situation, but we can still validate their experience. We can still validate their emotions as well. Validation is a really crucial component to DBT and it's inherently non-judgmental. And so there's, there's levels of validation within DBT, um, but I really thought that the best way to kind of approach the concept of validation for today was to highlight their, you know, what I see in DBT as the things that we're really doing. We're validating clients, we're helping clients learn to validate themselves, and we're helping clients learn how to validate others, right? So the a whole piece of validation is really pervasive throughout the whole entire model of DBT. And I find, especially for those clients who struggle with self-validation, us showing them what validation looks like, us validating our clients can be so helpful in them learning how they can then take that and start to self-validate. So as clinicians, we really want to provide a safe and a non-critical, a non-judgmental space where clients are able to come in and where they can express themselves openly. The reality is this, nobody likes to be judged. We don't like to be judged, right? Our clients don't like to be judged. People want to be able to come in and talk about their stuff, which is often very heavy, very complex, very complicated. And for some of our clients, they probably are sharing things with us that they don't share with anybody else. And so the space that we hold for clients is so incredibly crucial. And so validation really involves that empathetic understanding of a client's perspectives. It's really like, you know, taking a step into our client's shoes, seeing the world from our client's viewpoint for a moment. And so we can validate the problem's importance to the client. We can validate difficulties that a client might have with a task. We can validate a client's emotional pain. We can validate clients' reasons for feeling out of control or having intense emotions. We can validate clients' past learning history. Validating primary emotional responses and expressions. We can validate their cognitions. So we can reflect thoughts, values, assumptions. And we can also validate their ability to reach their goals 
and builds what Marshall Linehan calls a life worth living. And that's ultimately what we're helping clients to work towards as they're developing these skills is that life worth living. So for clients, why would clients want to validate, right? And so, so many clients come in and I find like the best way maybe I can put it for right now is there's this protective armor up. For a lot of my clients, they've experienced, you know, an extensive amount of trauma over the course of their lives. And so it makes sense why they would feel that way. So not only do they struggle to validate others, they also struggle to validate themselves as well. And so we validate others because it helps our relationships be better. It calms intense situations so that we can problem solve. And we self-validate because it quiets defensive and fearful emotions. And once that is done, then we're able to problem solve. And it enables us to let go of pain and exhaustion. So think about it for a second. You know, maybe you've had a time where you feel a certain way, or you can even think about a client who you know is feeling a certain way, but then they tell themselves, I just shouldn't feel this way. You know, I just should be able to handle it. I just should be able to manage it. Um, Those moments where we self-invalidate, right? When we do that to our own emotional experiences, create more conflict and turmoil for clients. And so teaching clients to self-validate is extremely important and crucial in DBT. 